So I just recently found out that I matched into a US residency and that too into my top choice and in this video I'll be revealing where exactly did I match but before we jump into that let me build some context on how I reached uh, like my top choice and like what led to all of that. So uh, hi, my name is Manik Madan. Welcome back to this video and uh, in this video we'll be going over first of all my whole math journey about like you know the interviews, how many places did I apply to, how many interviews did I get, uh, how did I prepare for the interviews and then how did I rank uh, the places I interviewed at and then like all about the place where I matched at. And um, so starting off, I am a recent grad. I graduated in 2020 and uh, I'm a non-US IMG born and raised in India. And uh, I applied solely to psychiatry. I did not have a backup plan uh, like uh, at all. I did not have a backup specialty. So that was a bit scary. And uh, considering psychiatry is far more competitive for IMGs compared to specialties like IM, neurology, pathology, and peds. So that was scary. So starting with my applications, my step scores. So I have a step one score of 260. Uh, then I have a step two CK score of uh, 271. So uh, these uh, scores really helped me a lot to fetch a lot of interviews because scores really matter a lot. Any person who says that scores don't matter uh, as much, uh, like in getting the interviews or even like during the interviews they don't know because I remember like during my interviews everybody kept on asking me about like how did you score uh, so well in the USMLEs like uh, and all about my test taking strategies and they were also very curious about like is in my medical school I did not really top at any time I was never the topper in my medical school and they could see that in my medical school transcripts so they were very surprised that I scored so well in the US MLEs even though I was not the topper of my med school and they asked me like what caused that improvement so it was it's another conversation we can get on to I recently passed my step 3 uh, what you need to know about is I did not give my step 3 before applying to the match or even during the match I gave it during near the end of the match but I just recently passed it so that's great my USCE so I have about 4 months of USCE and that too like uh, two inpatient experiences and two outpatient experiences all of them were hands-on these were mainly externships really and out of these four US clinical experiences I was able to generate about four US LORs which were all specific to psychiatry because I did my experiences in psychiatry other than that um, I have about uh, 11 work experiences uh, which go from experiences in medicine to experiences in teaching and then I have about 11 volunteer experiences uh, one research experience where I worked at like for about two months as a remote research assistant in Northwestern University of Chicago. Another thing to consider about my application is I applied broadly. I spent about $5,000 in total applying to different places. So I applied like to 100 plus programs. So how many interviews did I get? I got about 14 interviews in total and out of these 14 interviews, about two of them were pre-matches. What a pre-match means is uh, these two programs weren't really participating in the NRMP match and like if I interview at these places, they they might give me like a pre-match offer that is within about a month asking me to withdraw from the match uh, and just uh, take the position there I'll get into what happened really with the pre-matches because that's very interesting in my application so most of my interviews were about like four to eight hours long uh, all of them were virtual this does not include one to two hours of pre-interview socials that happened the night before the interview where you interact with the residents so they range from like six to ten hours if you add the pre-interview socials how was my interview experience I would say interviews take a lot out of you in this whole USMLE journey the most stressful period is the interview season and there are a lot of reasons for this right like let's think about one interview to prepare for one interview you need to sit like down the day before and you need to like research the whole program make your points of the program the questions that you want to ask and look up uh, different professors their research and so that you can talk and bring that up during the interview so like that you appear to be interested in the program uh, which uh, is critical right so it takes that one day before the interview and then there is the pre-interview social and then there's an the interview the interview takes about the whole day because uh, you have to really focus on that and then the day after you have to think about your thank Thank you notes that you want to send to your to the faculty you interviewed uh, with so like one interview takes about at least two days and then like one day more like so it takes about three days so if you have 14 interviews it takes about 42 days in total of full concentration on the interviews so that I thought like I was surprised about like how much effort just one interview takes that was really interesting uh, secondly like since I applied in the psychiatry match the most interesting part about like this whole process was every single interview I went I was like most of the times the only non-US IMG in those interviews and uh, most of my peers uh, like who I was interviewing with uh, like either had a green card 
um, or they were American grads. So they were either US IMGs or American grads. That was interesting and that caused me caused a lot of anxiety because uh, you are like up against people who have green cards or who have graduated uh, from an American university. So there were a lot of people like like when I was interviewing with like people who were interviewing with the program also who had PhDs. So like I was up against people who had PhDs and I was up against people who had like research experience for one to two years at places like Mayo or Duke University. So that was a bit scary and caused a lot of anxiety in it. And then what happened was I had, so I had two pre-match interviews and uh, after giving my pre-match interviews, I waited about a month and I did not hear uh, from any of the programs. It was not about that I really wanted to match into a pre-match program, like really, but it was more about like when you get a pre-match offer, that kind of says something about your interview performance that you interview really well, and that's why you got the pre-match offer, but I did not get the pre-match offer, so that made me very unsure about like my own interview skills, whether I was good enough as an applicant, but you know, like it all worked out for the end, like well at the end, cause I did get into my top choice. So uh, don't worry if uh, you do not hear from pre-match programs. Sometimes they think that you're not the right fit, so it's not about the interview performance always. What else? What helped me was I think again interview prep did help me. I did take uh, professional assistance from uh, Match a Residence big interview prep. They have a whole tool I'll mention the links below and I also use their free interview uh, guidelines that they give like uh, free interview tips uh, from the Instagram page and their website. Um, again I'll be mentioning that there's also this page called Inside the Match. Uh, they have a website Instagram and Twitter I'll be mentioning them below and they have great interview uh, tips. However, I think I did benefit from one-on-one -on -one, um, interview consulting with match residents being interview prep, which was insanely helpful. It helped me structure my answers. Uh, and I think that did uh, play a very big role in me getting matched. Uh, so by February, I made my rank order list and it only consisted of about 13 positions. The reason was uh, like, was like, so I didn't get the two pre-matches. So those I could not rank. So only 12 programs were left. And one program I interviewed uh, with them for two positions. Uh, one was uh, the normal psychiatry position. The other one was a child and adolescent psychiatry uh, fast track position. So in the end, I ranked about 13 places. So what factors like did I use to make my rank order list? So the first preference that I had was that I wanted to go to a university based program because I'm very interested in research. So I sorted the programs based on like, okay, you university uh, based programs were the first programs second was proximity rating so once i sorted like university programs at the top and community programs at the bottom i, I uh, used proximity ratings to sort them like uh, sort the university programs out community programs out and then in the end i used my gut feeling and uh, like fellowship availability to sort it further uh, so i applied uh, those things too there's another post that i'll mention down below it's called uh, it's a really interesting post if you want to know how to rank programs by uh, dr brian Camrodi. He has a really good post and I use that also uh, to kind of sort the programs out and it is a tough process to do in February and then uh, like uh, on March 14th I got to know where I matched and March 18th uh, I got to know the place where I matched so I'll be revealing this right now you'll be seeing, seeing the reveal. So guys the match results are here and I now will know where I matched uh, so March 14th was uh, like whether I knew like if I match or not and I'm matched but today's March 18th and I'll get to know like where I match and the results are gonna come let's open the email together uh, please pray for me it's my top choice I'll let you know if it is I'm opening the email right now guys oh my god Guys, I got the results. I matched into my top choice, Penn State Hershey. It's one of the best programs in like an institutional name and I'm beyond lucky to match here. Thank you so much, guys. Oh my God, Simba, aren't you happy? Say hi, say hi, say hi to the camera. We matched, we matched, we matched. So there you saw that I matched my top choice, Penn State Hershey Milton S. Center. Uh, and this program is under the umbrella of uh, Penn State Health or Penn State College of Medicine and is a university based program. They also have a child and adolescent fellowship in psychiatry. Also, uh, they have a public uh, psychiatry fellowship. So that's uh, something that I'm also very excited about. And this program is one of the top 20 research universities in America for uh, psychiatry and that is amazing because I want to get into research and I can't just get a uh, way to get started in Hershey. So the program is located in Hershey, which is where the Hershey Chocolate Factory is. It's also a college town. So there's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll get to have a lot of Hershey chocolate. So I'm going to talk about now like about a few X factors that helped me match. Uh, these are important like to set you apart from other candidates. 
the first x factor that i had with my application was the tone of my application so what i mean by tone of the application is uh the coherence of my applications towards the one specialty i was applying towards and that was psychiatry so if you were to see my application you would see four us based lors just for psychiatry all near about all of my work experiences were in psychiatry even my volunteer experiences a majority of them were geared towards psychiatry my hobbies which is meditation and uh, self improved reading books about self improvement are again towards psychiatry like my interest in mindfulness and my research experience was again in psychiatry so none of the pds or none of the faculty i was interviewing with ever asked me the question whether psychiatry was a backup specialty for me and the reason they didn't ne- never they didn't never asked me that was because the tone of my application was set towards psychiatry and that played a huge part uh, i think in uh, me matching in a psychiatry program because everybody wants like every pd every faculty wants to work with a person who is really interested in their specialty and who is not treating them as a backup and when you look at my application they could tell i did not have a backup and psychiatry was the only thing i was interested at and i think that played a huge part uh, and that is the coherence of my application a huge shout out to alexandra miragaya who kind of came up with this thing called the tone and i think this is a good way to think about the application is uh, how different components of your application work towards uh, conveying a certain message and i think uh, the tone is the most important thing if you are applying towards a certain specialty uh, secondly i think my cv was extremely well rounded and if you look at my cv um i have teaching experience where uh, so i teach a course on skill share uh, where i teach about meta learning meta cognition uh, that is how to learn really and um then i have a course on the usmle where i teach about how to take uh, the test uh, so test taking strategies and uh, like the pds and a lot of the faculty were really fascinated by that uh, i also have uh, like experience in uh, teaching public speaking and i also take part in debates so that is something that they found really interesting and i've also worked jobs where uh, other than medicine so that was something interesting to talk about and i've also traveled a lot all over the world one of the most uh, things that were brought up one of the experiences uh, was my elective in brazil where i did an ophthalmology elective in brazil and i learned uh, portuguese and they were like oh tell us uh, something about you know brazil and uh, can you talk in portuguese so we always like discuss it so i'm also multilingual so my whole application was so well rounded did um and i think that is something that they look for is how well rounded this person is is he just a like a nerd who is just studying all the time or is this person also developing himself in other fields so that's something that's really important thirdly what really stood out was like my teaching interest a lot of programs really look out for residents who can teach well because uh if you can teach well you can teach the medical students at their program uh and that is something very use that's very useful and it's also like it looks good for the university so my teaching interest so i'm a tutor for the usmc step one step to ck also have a youtube channel where i kind of teach on how to take these steps and i think that uh really made me stand out uh fourthly my hobbies uh which uh, were like all towards self improvement uh, that is reading self help books number one number two it was about meditation i think that really was interesting to the pds and i always uh, got asked about something called as biofeedback based meditation so i do uh, like do something called as biofeedback based meditation where i use brain waves to see how well i'm meditating and i think that can be uh, seen in research that can be used in research i also have a device uh, that uses heart rate variability which is a measure of uh, vagal tone which you can use towards meditation so i had two devices that i always show uh during the interviews and i think that was interesting lastly i think what they want is somebody who's extremely personable as a doctor because like you know the best kind of doctor would be somebody who can communicate well and i think my interpersonal communication skills were well developed and they could see that based on my youtube channel based on the interview performance that i gave and also like the courses that i was teaching so i had some solid backing to you know uh, my interpersonal com- and communication skills and uh, that was something that impressed them and i think if you're applying for the coming math seasons really really think about these uh, uh, five uh, qualities that i talked about because these are the qualities that can help you stand out in the whole match and that can make them remember you uh, and then rank you to your uh, top preference again thank you for watching